Hey, thanks for stopping in, everybody. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of this show, On Top and Hot. And today's the middle of the week, Wednesday. It is November 16th. Now, every day on this show, I like to share information with you about hot OTC and penny stocks. I trade penny stocks and OTC stocks all through the day. Now, I do trade OTC a lot of times. What I don't like about it is the fact that I got to pay for every trade I get in and out of. Not everybody is free. TD Ameritrade is not. So that's a consideration every time I get into a stock and get out. So I like to trade penny stocks. Now, penny stocks aren't just on the OTC, they're on every single market. Any stock under five bucks qualifies. So when I go trade a penny stock on the NASDAQ, it's absolutely free. And I can trade them pre-market, aftermarket, which I can't do on OTC. And there are a lot of gains to be made pre-market on penny stocks on the major exchanges. It's worth getting up early for that, folks, I guarantee it. Now, most of the stocks I do look at are OTC. I like startup companies. I like these little bitty prices that can surge just a small distance and make me big gains. And all that news right there has come from some of my research this week. That's about five or six days worth of news all off the OTC market, all penny stocks. No financials, no public offerings. It's events. It's their mergers, their acquisitions, uplistings, new technology, expansion, all the great news you hope to find when you read the news. So if you haven't had time to read it like I have, there's a nice way to catch up. Now, when I do research on an OTC stock, I do have a favorite site I use all the time. This one, the otcmarkets.com website. For one main reason, it's updated every single day for every single OTC stock by FINRA and the SEC. I do not know of any other site online that does that. And it's absolutely free. You don't even have to sign in. This was put here for investors so that we would have a place to find current information that was legitimate. So make use of it, folks. Save yourself the hassle and time of running around the internet looking for information. It's right here. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Isn't looking good. It's down from yesterday. We're going to cross our fingers and hope for a bump, and we got nothing. Everything dropped today. We were at two, $2.1 billion yesterday. We're back down to 1.7. Share volume, I do believe we were at seven something yesterday. We were running from the five billions. We're right back into that ditch. And our trades. Well, we were over 300,000 yesterday. I think it was 323. Fourth time we hit it this month, which is, that's the first time we've done that in a very long time. Now we're back under at 265,000. Hopefully it's just a dip, but it isn't looking real good. So I've got some stocks I want to share with you. Stocks that have had news, stocks going through changes, stocks that I'm looking at myself. So let's see what I've got for us. First stock we're going to look at is probably under the radar for most investors. And I understand that. There hasn't been a whole lot going on with this company until recently. This is ticker BRBL, Brew Belt Brewery. This is a beer brewer out of Northern California. They came on the market through a reverse merger takeover back in 2021. Took over a ticker, changed it, changed the name, and now it's theirs. And it is just here in past July, they got their beer on the market. And so far, they've got over 200 customers. And today, they just came out with another news press about another major grocery chain that has taken on their products. So they finished the day at .005 with almost 64% gains. They're on the pink tier and current, and they've got those green ticks I'm always going on about. Now, folks, there is a lot of important information represented by these green ticks. And if you're going to get into a stock for a long hold, you need this information. But if you're just day trading, if you're doing a short swing, none of this really matters. You're not in there long enough for anything to really affect you. So what was the relative volume around this company's news today? Not huge, but nice chump. We went from about 1 million to almost 8 million. Share structure. Now this is a pink. I have been making a habit of diving into the disclosures to see if I can find the floats. These are 10Ks and 10Qs. It wasn't a disclosure, so I could not find the float. They tell us here that it's either 23 or 29, but I trust the unrestricted more than the DTC. So we're going to say it's about 30 million, 29, 30 million. However, that is a low float. I mean, really low. No, not like two or three million low, but look at this. Come down here to dividends and splits click the splits, you can see all the splits the company has had. 
Look right there, September 30th of this year, they did a one in 300 <laughs> reverse split. So take your 29 million and multiply that times 300. That's what the float was before. So yeah, we got a low float now. Financials. Well, the company has just started making money and some of this money you see on the table is from the old company before they took over. But at the end of last year, this was their company. They had $307,000. We got to take these three zeros up there, put them behind any of the numbers on this chart. And they only paid 11,000 for it. How do you do that? And they got to keep $295,000. And the first two quarters are not making a lot of money yet. 89,000 and 31,000, but they're not paying very much for it. So that's incredible. Um, and we should have one more uh, financial out. Maybe that's over here in disclosures. Let's take a look. Ah, NT10Q. So they are filing quarterly reports under the 10K and 10Q. So they're not disclosures, but that NT means not. They're not filing the 10Q on time. This is an excuse filing. It'll buy you five days on a quarterly and buy you 15 more days on an annual. And it's funny too because I see a lot of companies file these NTs just before the financials is supposed to come out and the stock jumps on the NT. So when the financial comes out, regardless of what it is, it's probably not going to jump. It already jumped. So we do have a late filing here. They get five more days. What's today? The 16th. So they've got until the 20th, and then we're going to see what they're doing this last quarter. All right, let's jump on over to that news. Now, they don't have a lot of news up here at the top, and what they do have is outdated 2016. But we got a lot of news down here back to August. All of this has been imported from other sites online. Now, this is all basically saying the same thing. We're doing a great job. This is telling us about all their milestones, all their progress. And to catch us up, I got two of these news presses, which basically touch on to each of their milestones. This one came out October 24th. We have started deliveries to our California-based Safeway and Grocery Outlet customers. There are 246 Safeway stores and 259 Grocery Outlet stores in California alone. Together, Safeway and Grocery Outlet cover more than 18 states with over 1,150 locations in over 700 cities. The company has also earmarked the year 2023 to open its first public tap room, which will champion all of the flagship craft beers as well as test marketing new craft products. Also, a second 70,000 square foot brewery is being designed to increase production in order to meet the growing demand of their retail accounts. The other piece of news to give us the rest came out today. Brew Belt Brewing expands retail reach as its craft beers enter Albertsons Safeway stores in Northern Cal. Albertsons and Safeways have merged together, but they're still separate chains. So we've been in Safeway, but not Albertsons. We are now. They tell us here that the company currently has a Type 23 license in the state of California, which allows them an annual production of 60,000 barrels of beer, which equates out to about $36 million annually. The company is trying to get a Type 1 license, which will give them unlimited production. Now, the CEO of the company states, as mentioned last week, we are one of the fastest expanding new brewers in the USA as we now have built a quality commercial brewery in the past 12 months and launched our core craft beers in the past four months. Our products are everywhere locally in the Grass Valley area and we are now proud to be an Albertsons Safeway vendor. Our revenue is expanding on a daily basis and profitability is on the near horizon. This will afford Brewbilt to repurchase shares, reduce debenture transactions, and implement a dividend program for our shareholders. Folks, they've already got a low float. All right, it's 29 million. It's not really a low float, but it could have been 300 times bigger. And they're talking about buying some of those shares off the market. That's nice. That's a company you want on your side. They're also looking for a dividend program. Dividends are never bad. So the company's got a lot going on now. They've got 200 separate customers, major grocery stores moving their products, and they've only been out there since July. The momentum is picking up. Let's go take a look at that chart and see if we can see that momentum there too. 
So if it's all right with you, we're going to do our charting on my free trading platform, since it's the only one I got. This is Thinkorswim. You get it by signing up for a free trading account over at TD Ameritrade. Don't close your account, and you can use it anytime you like. So we are looking at two charts for BRBL, because they just changed their ticker two weeks ago, the last day of October, October 31st. They originally had a D behind their ticker for a very long time. The D represents a change, normally some sort of administrative change. Could be a name change, like they did, or a ticker change, like they did, or a reverse split, like they did. So they just got rid of that D two weeks ago. Six months ago, they had a high of 57 cents, and the last day using this ticker, they hit a low bubble of 0052. That was October 30th. October 31st, they came onto the market at 006, so they did get a bounce. However, it was very short-lived. For the next few days, she kept falling until she hit this low of 0027, and today, she took off. She started at 003 and went almost 200%, up to 0088, and then it's fallen back down here to uh, 005, sitting perfectly on her nine-day SMA. What a beautiful perch that is. Got lots of volume here today. Our PPO is very strong, pushing up. Our MACD is strong strong, but it shows signs of pulling back right now, and our RSI is tumbling right now because the price has fallen all the way down. Keep in mind, your RSI is the price line. If you change all of these bars into a line, that's what the line would be, exactly. So if ever you see the price fall here, guaranteed it's going to fall there. Is it any wonder why people like to see the RSI rising? Let's take a look at the five-day, five-minute. So nothing was happening the days before. She had a nice jump first thing in the morning, about 35, 40%. Took a small dip, She's hanging tight to that nine day SMA. She got a big rise, fell back to her nine day SMA, got underneath it, and right now it looks like she's trying to get back on top of it. Doesn't even look like she's paying a whole lot of attention to the 50 day. It is that nine day SMA. And honestly, folks, your stock cannot grow until the price is on top of the nine day. The smallest one first, then it can conquer the rest. Our technicals, uh, they're a bit negative right now, folks. They all show downhill momentum. So she could come down further. Oh, look what we got in the picture. 200 day SMA. Now I have this feeling that when these new SMAs come onto the board, more often than not, I see the price run to that line and tag it. Sometimes they stay there, sometimes they go right back to where they were, but it's like they gotta pay homage or something. So there may be a chance this is gonna fall down to 0041. So she's at a real good price right now, folks. She's in the double zeros, not the triple zeros, so you know she's gonna be moving around now. They are just now starting to make money. Their products are out there in big grocery store chains that are in lots of states, lots of different locations, lots of cities. So keep your eye out on BRBL. Do some more DD. You may find that now is a time to get in. But remember, don't buy everything at once. Don't make that mistake. Only buy some of what you want. Know how much you want and then buy 20%, 25% at this really beautiful price. And if it dips, you won't freak out because you've still got 60, 80% more to buy and you can buy it cheaper at a lower price and lower your average. And when it all does brew up and start to take off, you're going to have a nice share account and a great price. We're now going to take a look at a penny stock on the NASDAQ, at least for the time being. This is ticker FSRD, Fast Radius Inc. Now, because they are on the NASDAQ, we have to concern ourselves with their price. They have a minimum bid price requirement on the NASDAQ. They can't go under a dollar for too long or they'll get yanked off the major exchange and thrown down to the OTC. However, to be frank, that is the least of their problems right now. The fact is they just filed for a bankruptcy November 7th, and they've been told they're being kicked off of the NASDAQ because of the bankruptcy. You can't stay on a major exchange if you're in bankruptcy. They're being kicked off and thrown down to the OTC anyways, and that is happening November 18th. They got one more day on the major exchange before they drop. Now, the reason I'm showing this to you, 
There seems to be a pattern with traders right now with these bankruptcies falling off of the major exchanges coming down to the OTC. Just before they leave the NASDAQ, the price bounces as if there was a going away party or something. Then when it comes to the OTC, it bounces again like there's a welcome here party. I don't know why it bounces, but we see this over and over again. And right now she is bouncing. This is her first bounce leaving. I thought you might want to know so you can be there when she arrives on the OTC. She finished the day at 21 cents with over 106% gains. So she has got a lot of attention right now. So what does FSRD do? Well, they say that Fast Radius is a cloud manufacturing and digital supply chain company. The Fast Radius cloud manufacturing platform provides software applications and manufacturing solutions that help engineers design, make, and fulfill commercial grade parts when and where they are needed. This enables companies to manufacture and ship parts easily, flexibly, and sustainably. They are headquartered in Chicago, they've got other offices in the States, and they've got one in Singapore. So what was the relative volume around this bad news today? <laughs> what? You see what I'm talking about? A bloody magnet. She jumped from 5 million to 180 million shares on a bankruptcy. We're leaving the NASDAQ going down to the OTC. Holy cow. Share structure. All right, I had to go out to Google to find this one, got lucky. It looks like there is about, uh, what was it, 57 million or something like that. Let, let me see if I still got it over here. I don't want to tell you the wrong number. Uh, 32 million, see, I would have given you a wrong number. 32 million is what they've got in the float. Not a bad float, not super duper low, but not a bad float. What are they doing for money? Eeps. Well, here's a problem. We got no money on the annuals, and we do have some this year. We got six million the first quarter, seven million the second quarter, but look at that. They don't get to keep very much money. So they got a lot of problems right now, don't they? Disclosures, anything recent over here that we can dive into? Actually, I did dive into a lot of this, and it's all about the bankruptcies. They are looking for bidders. They're trying to get help. They're looking for a way out of this, but this is just the start of all of the fixings. So we got a long ways to go. So that's the situation right now, folks. She is in bankruptcy. She's being kicked off the NASDAQ. She took a big jump today, and I expect she's going to take a jump, just like all the other bankruptcies have been doing, once she lands her feet into the OTC market. Now, the company hasn't got any news, so I'm going to dive into one of those filings we just saw there. Any one of them will do because they all keep saying the same information over and over again. So they tell us here, as previously disclosed on November 7th of this year, Fast Radius, together with its subsidiaries, filed voluntary petition for bankruptcy. Trading of the securities will be suspended at the opening of business on November 18th. They will be on the OTC markets from that point on. So we're seeing a bounce right now. As she's leaving the NASDAQ, I expect a bounce when she gets onto the OTC. And I think now is a good time to put your eyes on her. Let's go take a look at that chart. So we're looking at FSRD, six month, four hour chart, still on the NASDAQ. Now in saying that, when it moves to the OTC on the 18th, they're gonna be adding a Q to the end of the ticker. The Q represents they're in bankruptcy. Oh, and some bonus information. She is gonna be bringing her warrant along with her down to the OTC market. Not a lot of warrants on the OTC, and they are cheap, a lot cheaper than the stock. And in many cases, when there's any sort of push or catalyst, you'll see the warrant move faster and farther than the stock did. So that's always a consideration to play. Don't overlook that. So this is FSRD six month, four hour chart. We had a high back here almost six months ago of $3.53. And she's been running downhill to this very small price now of about nine cents. She hit that two days ago. Our technicals right now, actually shows she's still climbing. We've got a separation on our PPO going up and our ADX going down. Whenever that spread gets wider and wider, the price is climbing. Our MACD just had a crossover and it is pushing towards the signal line. And our RSI is a bit tempted right now, right at 50. Let's take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. 
So she's not only been running downhill, she's had some volatility. Look at that drop, huge drop, and then a huge recovery. Look, it took two days to get down and actually only took one day to get back up. You normally don't see that. There are some huge spike jumps here, trying to get over that 200 and just not making it. She's hit a new low bubble here of that nine cents and now she's bouncing off of that again. She's got her head right on that 200, banging it over and over and is settled right about in the middle of her gains. Our technicals still look strong. They do show signs of that pullback, but they still show a lot of heat. Five day, five minute. Now I'm interested in this because we got one more day on the NASDAQ. Is she gonna go crazy tomorrow for no good reason? So she had a jump yesterday. The day finished bad. She was falling all day and had this huge jump after market hours. I noticed that when I was looking at the charts yesterday. First thing in the morning, she had another bounce. You know, you had two jumps here after a huge couple of days of falling. She went sideways and then had another jump right at the bell and held most of her gains. She did dribble a little bit of them off, but for the most part, she is well over 50%. She's still above her 200, showing a lot of activity after market. And she is underneath all of her SMAs right now, including her nine day SMA. Our technicals, they're weak. They're not showing any signs of popping, but I don't care. <laughs> Look, this is the last day on the NASDAQ, and I've just seen this over and over again. It's like putting a cold glass in hot water. It just cracks. Now, there's no guarantee it's going to crack, but I've seen it happen over and over again. So, definitely put FSRD on your watch list for tomorrow. See if she bounces her last day on the NASDAQ. Then remember, she's going to fall down to the OTC on the 18th. Watch for a bounce then. Now, honestly, I think there'll be a little bit of hesitation. Maybe one day she'll come down into the OTC, shake off the fall, and then the next day she may bounce and jump. Keep your eyes on FSRD. This happens too many times to be a coincidence. Our last stock we're taking a look at is going to be a twofer. You're going to get two for the price of one here. I really can't talk about TPTW without talking about another company, if I'm doing my due diligence correctly. So TPT Global Tech, they had some big news come out yesterday afternoon. The stock was doing well all by itself without the news. It was climbing all day. I had noticed it. Then this news came out around 1.30, 2 o'clock, somewhere around there, and I did not see the news come out. But the stock did, and it took off, and today it just picked up where it left off yesterday and continued growing. So TPTW finished today at 0 .0084 with over 82% gain. She's on the pink tier in current. She's got those green ticks I tell you to look for, so she looks really good. Plus, she has independent directors. Now, this kind of gives us a little bit of insight into what the company may be planning. You do not need independent directors for much of anything except for uplisting. You cannot uplist without independent directors, and I don't know of a whole lot more they do besides that. So, just having them there could be an inclination of what they're thinking. So what does this company do? Well, it looks like they do a heck of a lot, actually. TPT Global Tech, based in San Diego, California, is a technology-based company with divisions providing telecommunications, medical technology, and product distribution, media content for domestic and international syndication, as well as technology solutions. They offer software as a service, technology platform as a service, cloud-based communication as a service, and a whole lot more. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Whoa, look at the jump, folks. 11 million to 255 million. Did over a quarter billion shares today on the news I'm gonna share with you. Share structure for this company. Well, I did jump into the disclosure. It's a 10K, 10Q. Normally can't find the float there, so we're gonna have to take the word for it. It is close to a billion shares. Ouch, that hurt. Financials for this company. Woo, they are making some money. Remember those three zeros. At the end of 2021, they did over $10 million, but they got to keep about 2.2, so get, giving away a lot of that money. Quarterly, well, they're doing about $2 million each quarter, and it looks like they have another quarter here that needs to be added on. Let's see if that's sitting over here right now. Oh, they're late too. Not 
10Q. So they put this in on the 14th. They have five days from the 14th to get their filings in or they will be late. And we've got an 8K and that 8K is going to line up to the news. So let's jump on over that news. Now they got a lot of news over here we could dive into, but to be completely honest, this isn't the stock I want to share with you. Yeah, they had great news, they have had great gains, nothing wrong with that at all. But when we look at the news, like we're going to do right now, they talk about a subsidiary that just made a deal, and as I looked at it, it looked like a peculiar situation with a lot of potential, and I thought you might like to see it too. Now, the last thing we can look at here is that the company was considering a reverse split, but at the end of September, they decided to cancel it. So that was good news. Now, the news we're going to look at, they say came out today. Well, I know I read it yesterday. Someone pointed it out to me after the fact. They said, did you see how far this ran? I looked at the chart. It's like, I didn't see why. They pointed out the news. So why there's a difference here, I really don't know but it doesn't matter. I'm still going to share the news with you. So this is the news that came out today. TPT Global Tech Inc. signed strategic investment and partnership agreement with New York real estate investment firm Black Pearl Investments. Today, the company announced it has signed a strategic investment partnership agreement for cooperation in design, development, manufacture, investment, and management of projects specifically related to smart green cities, residential housing, commercial real estate, industrial smart parks, infrastructure, and sustainable development with Black Pearl Holdings Company. Now, all the lead development, construction activities, and operations for these smart projects is going to be handled by TPT's subsidiary, TPT Strategic, which is also on the OTC market, INOQ. And they also recently closed an acquisition of Information Systems Technologies, IST. And that's the one I want to show you. Now, they got a lot of news here that we could go through, but to be completely honest, this isn't even the company I want to share with you. I know there was great news, great gains. It's a good stock to consider. But in the news we're going to look at here, they talk about a subsidiary that just made a deal and is going to be doing a lot of work for them. And when I looked at it, it was like, how strange, how peculiar, how much potential there is here. And that's the one I want to share with you. Now, before we look at that news, I do want to point out here that this company was considering doing a reverse split, but they decided to cancel it at the end of September which is always a big deal. Then we have the news that came out. Well, they say it came out today, but I'm telling you folks, I read this news yesterday evening, so I know it came out before today. So regardless, whenever it came out, I still want to share this with you. So this came out today. TPT Global Tech Inc. signed strategic investment and partnership agreement with New York real estate investment firm Black Pearl Investments. Today, the company announced it has signed a strategic investment partnership agreement for cooperation in design, development, manufacture, investment, and management of projects specifically related to smart green cities, residential housing, commercial real estate, industrial smart parks, infrastructure, and sustainable development with Black Pearl Holdings. All the lead development, construction activities, and operations for these smart projects will be handled by TPT subsidiary, TPT Strategic, also on the OTC market, INOQ, which recently closed its own acquisition of Information Systems Technology, IST, and that's the one I want to show you. So we jump on over here. Now, this has a lot of peculiarities, folks, and I'm going to walk you through this. First off, the company is not on the market right now. It's not selling. I really can't find any reason why it's not selling. There always is one. Now, I do notice that they are pink limited. That means they're late on one or more of their filings. And when you jump over here into disclosures, I can see they're missing filings. They're every three months. So we should see 36912, 36912 for two years. There's no nines, there's no 12s. So they're definitely missing some filings. But I don't think that's the reason why they're not trading. If that is the problem, they'll yank them off the market and put them on the expert market. That's what the expert market is for, people who are late on filing and they've been late too long. And you'll normally get grace period right down here before they get yanked. 
So I don't think that's the reason. I'm not real sure why it is. Second thing I want to point out, which you've probably already noticed and you're waiting for me to say something about, is that crazy gain. Oh my God, 37,400%. She's at $3. Her gain was over $2.99. What happened here, folks, is this was a behind the scenes purchase by a marketer or a broker. You come over here to quote and you can see trades off the market. When it's not trading between me and you and somebody is trading it, you can see it over here under trade data. And you can see back in August, she was at $2. And then at the end of August, she fell all the way down here to double zero eight. We don't know why. They don't tell us anything. And then one week ago, only 100 shares were purchased and it kicked that price up to $3. Now maybe somebody knew something, maybe it has something to do with this acquisition or all the work that they're going to get from the new deal that TPTW just announced today. Maybe somebody knew something. It could be a good heads up. Going back to that information, I want to show you her financials are zilch. She's a shell company. So all this work they're going to be bringing in is going to be making them money. Now, I'm a little confused here because when you look at the news, the news is great. Remember I told you they just made an acquisition. TPT Global Tech subsidiary signs agreement to acquire Alabama-based IST with $9.5 million backlog and executed government contracts. 9.5 million, that is back in July. Then here in October, TPT Global closes the merger acquisition between its subsidiary strategic and IST, the construction company, which now has 5.4 million in backlog. So between July and October, they did about $4 million worth of business. So they are kicking butt. And then we had news here, TPT Global Tech's real estate technology completes a $2.8 million road construction project. You can see there's money coming in. It just isn't showing up yet. Now let's take a look. Oh, well, they didn't have one. I was gonna see if they had a disclosure sitting on the table like the others or if they're gonna be late. Well, they're late. There was no nines, there were no 12s. But you can see there is money sitting here. So is this all that I'm showing you? No. Let me show you the biggest reason I think you need to be watching this stock. Share structure. Folks, look at that float. 103,000. Oh my God. There's only 400,000 outstanding. Less than half a million. Now, did they do a split? Let's see if they did a split down here. Uh, no, they haven't done a split in a very, very long time. So here's a shell company doing no business, but we see millions of dollars of business are actually being generated right now, but they're late on their filings. So we can't see any of the numbers. Their parent company just made a big deal with a New York real estate investment company, and they're going to throw all the business down to this company. And they've only got 103,000 shares in the float. Folks, if this was to sell only a million shares in a day, that would have to be all the floats sold over 10 times. That means people who bought shares today have got to sell them if you want to get any shares. That's supply and demand. That can make this price skyrocket ridiculously. Oh, I can't even imagine. Now, the company isn't on the market right now, but we do have some chart to check out. So let's go see what it looks like. So I've gone ahead and pulled up both charts here for us, TPTW, the parent company, and INOQ, the subsidiary. Now the subsidiary hasn't got a lot of chart. That's everything right there, everything. This is a four hour, six month chart. We got a high bubble here in July of $5. Then she tumbled all the way down to a low in September of 008, an incredible fall. We don't have a lot of information here and it definitely doesn't look good. And there's a lot that doesn't look good. The company's late on their filings, which is a concern. They have no financials to see, no money on the board, and they're a shell company. 
But what do we know? Well, we also know that they've just made an acquisition of a company that's making millions of dollars. We see they're making money. It just isn't showing up anywhere because they're late on their filings. And they're getting all this business from TPTW, which has just made a deal themselves. So they're gonna come out of Shell with this low float. It's probably going to explode. It's definitely worth putting on your watch list. Now let's take a look at TPTW. They are on the market and they're doing quite well. This is a six month, four hour chart. We had a high back here of a penny and a half and a low of double zero one. She's been down here for a while and really broke free these last couple of days. Volume has been coming into the picture here recently and all of the technicals are screaming. Nothing is letting up right now on the four hour. Our 20 day, one hour view. Oh, she was just rolling around the 200 here, hit her low bubble of 0016, and yesterday she started to climb, and today she started to surge. Lots of volume coming in right now, and all of our technicals are on fire. Every single one of them are pointing up. You cannot lose if your oscillators are pointing up. Five day, five minute. Well, this is when I saw her yesterday. I seen her running up. I was looking around for news. I couldn't find anything. So I just kind of left her alone. And I'm gonna presume right here is when the news came out. Boom, and what time was that? That was 10 to three. And you can see she shot like a rocket the rest of the day. Woke up this morning, bright eyed and bushy tailed and took off again. She did fall down to her 50, bouncing off of that, hitting a new high for the day of 0089. Trickled down to 0084 and is sitting on top of her SMAs right now. Technicals look cool. They don't look real hot right now, but they don't look negative. Looks like she's in a decisive position right now. TPTW, it was big news. They did have a big run today, and it does show that she is still pushing up. She didn't give back anything today to really complain about. So it wouldn't hurt to be watching TPTW tomorrow. But her subsidiary, you've got to keep your eye on that one. 100,000 in float. Oh, my God. So those are three interesting stocks. That first one, BRBL, is a perfect startup company opportunity. This is a beer brewery in Northern California where microbreweries are hot. This company just got their beer out in July. They've already got 200 customers and a few large grocery chains distributing their beer. They want to buy back shares when they get money. They want to give a dividend and they do want to uplist. I think it's a great opportunity. Keep your eye on them. Then you've got FSRD. Psh, they're going bankrupt. These are crazy bounces for no explainable reason, but it had its bounce today. It's got one more day on the NASDAQ tomorrow. It could bounce, absolutely. And then it's going to come down to the OTC. It may bounce that first day, but I think it'll dust off. And then the second day, we might see that bounce. Keep your eye on FSRD. And then the last two, TPTW and their subsidiary, they've got their own thing going on with smart cities and real estate. And the subsidiary looks pathetic right now. We can see they have money coming in, but it's not showing up on filings because they're late on their filings. And that is our biggest concern with the subsidiary. They have got to get those filings caught up or they're going to be yanked off of the market and put on the expert market. And they'll be there until they get their filings caught up. So hopefully that's a priority for them. But with 100,000 shares in the float and money on the table, a new acquisition, all this business is going to be thrown at them. They're going to lose that shell designation. I think they're a company you need to be putting on your watch list for when they come back on the market. Remember, folks, DD isn't hard. It's kind of exciting. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.